Let's talk about heat energy. Get out your science notebook. Here's the essential question. How do chemical reactions obey the first law of thermodynamics? Well, what is thermodynamics? Thermodynamics is the study of energy in the form of heat. You can think of the term thermo and dynamics. Thermo means heat and dynamics means movement. So basically, we're just trying to study how heat moves between different systems in a chemical process. Now, what's energy? In order to understand thermodynamics, we need to understand energy. Energy is the ability to do, to do work or produce heat. Now, energy is measured in a unit called joules, though you're probably more familiar with the other unit, calories. 4,184 joules is equal to one food calorie. Now, work and heat. Let me give you an example of that via a hot air balloon. A hot air balloon uses heat. It, it uses fire to cause the air molecules to move and expand. And those air molecules work on the balloon. They exert a force causing it to inflate. Now, chemists are very interested in where energy comes from. So let's talk about the two main types or main forms of energy. There's chemical potential energy and there's chemical kinetic energy. Now, potential is energy stored in the bonds of shapes of the atoms and the molecules, while kinetic energy is energy that's released, typically in the form of heat or electricity because the particles are moving. You may have heard of potential and kinetic energy before in physics class or other physical science classes. And you've typically talked about it in terms of gravitational potential energy or kinetic energy when things fall down. But we're gonna be talking about chemical energy, both potential and kinetic. So I wanted to give you an example of chemical potential versus chemical kinetic energy. Here I have a canister of liquefied butane. Now this butane is not reactive. It is in a potential energy state. We know that it has stored energy because if we were to light it on fire, it would combust, which I'm gonna do right now. So we're gonna take this butane from its potential energy state and turn it into a kinetic energy state. Now let's talk about temperature and heat. A lot of times we use these two terms interchangeably when we really shouldn't. Temperature is the measurement of the average kinetic energy of particles. Typically we measure temperature with Celsius or Kelvin. Heat, on the other hand, is the total kinetic energy. It's the total movement of the, par of the particles and we measure it in joules. Here we can see on the right side, we have three different thermometers and they are measuring the movement of these particles. Let me give you a closer example of how they're not the same here by giving you an example of heat and temperature. To do that, I'm also going to talk about two important terms, system and surroundings. Now, system is this thing that we are focusing our, our thought process on. We're trying to understand what is happening to the system in terms of heat exchange. The surroundings is everything around the system, typically interacting with the system in terms of heat exchange. Now, our system here is ice water. Now, this ice water is continually changing its total kinetic energy. Notice that the surroundings is continually adding heat to our system. Now, if we were to put a thermometer in that system, we would see that the temperature is not changing. It would reach a point and it would be stagnant. Even though we are continually adding heat, the system would not change, or at least the average kinetic energy wouldn't change. The temperature wouldn't change, at least until the ice is gone. And that's because the, even though the molecules are continually getting faster and faster and faster and faster, the average amount is not because the ice in the water is slowing some of those particles down. So until that ice is gone, the temperature doesn't change even though the heat is continually changing. So key idea here, heat is not temperature. Don't get those two, don't use those two interchangeably and try to understand the difference between them. Now heat transfer is important to understand. Heat always transfers from the warmer object to the colder object until they reach what we call equilibrium, until both of them reach around the same amount of heat energy. Cold, by the way, is what we use to describe the absence of heat. Even though there is no such thing as cold energy, cold is just the absence of heat energy. All right, we finally reached the first law of thermodynamics. The first law of thermodynamics states that the energy of the universe is constant. That has never been my favorite way to describe what, thermo, what the first law is. Let's go in a little bit of detail. 
The first law really states that energy cannot be created or destroyed, but it may be converted or transferred from one form to another. Let's take a look at some examples of energy transfer and how energy and the heat energy is neither created or destroyed. Our first example is fireworks. We know that fireworks can start off as a powder, typically in the form of a gunpowder. Now that gunpowder has energy in it. It's stored energy. It's stored chemical energy in the bonds of those chemical substances. Now when we light that gunpowder on fire, it explodes out in a marvelous array of thermo energy. And that energy is kinetic energy. That potential energy gets released in the form of kinetic energy. And all that heat gets dissipated to its surroundings. So our system is the firework and the surroundings is all of the air and the light and everything that gets shot outwards. Another example is a battery, typically like a battery inside a phone. Now the battery is storing energy in the form of the chemical potential energy that's stored in the, chemist, the, the chemicals inside the battery. Now, when we actually use our phone, that chemical energy gets transferred to electrical energy in the form of moving electrons that allow our phone to work. The cool thing about this process is it's also reversible. When we take our phone battery and we plug it into the wall, that electrical energy or the stored energy from the wall gets transferred to the chemical energy of our battery. All of those redox reactions reverse themselves and store the energy back into the chemistry of the chemical energy of our phone. The last example is the sun. The sun is a form of electromagnetic energy. It's electricity and magnetism in the form of waves and it's kinetic energy. It's moving. You can probably feel the energy of the sun when you go outside. But plants themselves can take that energy and store it in their chloroplast. The chloroplast changes that kinetic energy into potential energy, typically in the form of sugars and starches. Now let's go back to our example of butane. In this form, butane is storing energy in its bonds. It's a chemical potential energy. Now when butane gets lit on fire, it starts a reaction that releases the energy from these bonds into, into kinetic energy in the form of heat or thermal energy. Now let's take a look at a um, chemical reaction equation and talk a little bit more about potential and, chem and kinetic energy. If we take a look at that butane that we just saw, butane is the form of this molecule here. And typically butane is reacting with oxygen in the air. Now, even though there's typically two amounts of butane and 13 amounts of oxygen, we're just gonna see one example of each. Now, these particles right now have stored energy. That butane is stored in a liquid form. And these molecules are typically unstable in this state. They don't want to stay in this state and they're very easily changed to a different state. When we light that butane on fire, these molecules change. They rearrange themselves to form carbon dioxide and water. Not only do they do that, they release that energy that was stored in butane in the form of heat. So this released energy allows these molecules to calm down. They become stable, more stable forms of carbon carbon dioxide and water. All right, that's the end of our notes. Take a moment to, now to review and highlight key terms, maybe ponder and ask questions and summarize and answer the essential question. Good luck. I wanted to give you an example of chemical potential and chemical kinetic energy. Here I have a canister of butane. Now this butane right now is in the form of and it's not reacting, it's nothing's happening to it. Now when we light that energy, when we start that energy's reaction, woo, Let's go back to our example, butane. Butane has chemical potential energies. Oh. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Okay. <laughs> energy gets released in the form of kinetic energy. 